Hey, this is Metal Jesus, and this week I'm going to be doing a very special episode with my friend Josh. I used to work with Josh at Sierra way back in the 1990s. Uh, he used to specialize in the adventure queue. That's right. I gotta put you on the spot. What's your favorite Sierra classic adventure game? Classic adventure game? Um, let's see. I know what you're gonna say. Do you? Yeah. It's not gonna be Legion Suit Larry. No, it's not Legion Suit Larry. That's, that's for sure. Probably Gabriel Knight. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel Knight! <laughs> that's right. Every time you go to pick up the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so this week, Josh is going to be helping me out, kind of digging into, you know, what it's like to go around searching for video games. Uh, occasionally I get you know, questions about sort of like, what do you do to find video games? Where do you go? How do you do it online? Stuff like that. So I thought it might be really fun to get his help, cruise around. It's kind of a cloudy Seattle day, and so I thought it's perfect to, to jump out there and try to find some stuff. So are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Let's do it. I do two types of searches when I'm looking for retro games. I do a lot of searches on my computer. Now, sometimes people just assume that I use eBay a lot. And actually, I haven't bought anything on eBay in probably over 10 years. And that's because of a wonderful website called Craigslist. Now, if you're not from the United States, Craigslist is this awesome free classified ad site that hundreds of thousands of people post ads on there every day and you can get some amazing deals. But more importantly, what I like about it is its search function. It's very flexible and essentially down at the bottom there's a little RSS button. So you, you type in your search, you get results, and then you use that little RSS button to add it to, I use Firefox as my web browser. Essentially what I do, have a bunch of searches and I basically go back and forth and very quickly can sort of see real-time results on Craigslist. And I've found a ton of great deals on there. As a matter of fact, most of my favorite retro game finds have been off Craigslist. Um, that's that's typically the way I, I do search, is, is, is off of that. Okay, and then the other type of search I obviously do is cruising around. You know, I live in the Seattle area, and I'm very lucky to have just a ton of options available to me for finding retro video games. And that really is, uh, it's a mix of dedicated kind of family businesses that do retro gaming only. Um, there's about five stores in the Seattle area that I just absolutely love. You know, little hole in the walls that just, you never know what you're gonna get when you walk in the door. And then also I hit up uh, thrift stores and pawn shops as well. And again, the thing I love about it is that you just have no idea what, what you're gonna get when you walk in the door. It changes every week and uh, you know, typically what I do is I, I cruise around, you know, from the north to the south and, you know, kind of around where I live, usually on a monthly basis, just to you know, do my rounds, so to speak. So for today, I'm actually in Josh's neck of the woods, which I've never been in before. And so what I used was Google Maps to find out where the local Goodwills are and also pawn shops. Now, he doesn't really have any sort of dedicated video game stores around here that I know of. Um, there is there are some of the, the franchises, like the bigger ones, like GameStop, but I'm not interested in that really because you kind of know what you get there. It's all the current gen stuff. I'm looking for Atari 2600 games. And actually that brings me to my next point. What's very important when you are going out is knowing what you want. And so I use an iPod to keep track of all of the games I'm looking for. Now the way that I, I use this tool is that when I'm, when I'm on a blog or I'm on a website and they mention that, that there's this great like Atari 5200 game, I will just dump it on this list. I don't even I don't even think about it. It's just simply, I just wanna keep track of it in case I run into it in a store. The other thing I use this for is that often whenever you run in, when you go into like a video game store and there's just like, you know, rows and rows of, of games to look at, sometimes it's a little overwhelming and so I need to, I need some sort of starting point, you know, when looking at some of these consoles. For instance, some of them that I'm not used to, like the Sega Genesis and stuff like that, I, I want to sort of have an idea as to the good games. So that's what I use this for. So step one from this is to get caffeine and food. Because oh. you, you need energy. You have to have energy. And this is, this is the only thing that should be on McDonald's menu right here, the quarter pounder with cheese. But this gives you lots of energy for game hunting because you've got all the fats in there and the protein and your carbs. Now, how many how many people a year does that kill? <sighs> I don't know. If I keep going the way I have been, I'm going to be one of them. Hey, we're at a Goodwill here in Kent and found some interesting stuff. I don't think I'm going to buy it, but I just kind of want to show you guys here. 
this was uh, this was a cool find. Sega Game Gear. Twenty five bucks. I don't know if I want it that badly, but it does have some games in there. That's very tempting. And uh, a couple PlayStation games here. That's a fun game. Old Atari, which I already have. And look at this Dreamcast. Thirty bucks. All right, mission accomplished. I actually found some stuff. Didn't pay too much. I just picked up random games here. I have no idea if they're even any good. But Road Blaster is a classic for the Genesis. Paid three bucks. Eco the Dolphin. <laughs> no idea. Actually, I don't think I've ever played this game. Two ninety five. Random game. Uh, Menacer. Three bucks. Probably sucks. And based on the title alone, I had to get RoboCop versus Terminator. Three ninety nine, and then finally, a uh, Super Nintendo game that you recommended, which was Darius Twin. That's right. Here's my question, Jason. How? What made the decision in the stuff that you bought in the last shop that we went into? How did you choose yeah. what you wanted to get? So none of those things were on my list to buy. And essentially, I have. I've, there's really two types of games that I, I, I buy for. There's games that are that I'm collecting and that they're they're collectors, you know, they're collector prices. Right. You know, to me that's like thirty bucks or more. Okay. Especially for a retro game. And then there's games that are just like anything under five bucks. Yeah. And and a lot of games that you'll see are sort of like five bucks and under. That's free game for me. Yeah. Totally. I mean it basically I'm willing to sort of take a risk at that sort of price level. Yeah. Um Especially like a game like Eco the Dolphin, which you've heard from people should exactly. be owned. If it was less than five bucks, there's no reason not to pick it up. Yeah, and that's, that's, and that's kind of what I'm doing today. Yeah. Now, now, if there's, you know, but I am looking specifically for games that are like awesome. Yeah. Um, so th that, that's, that's the logic that I go through with all this. Cool. Stuff. Right so, on. you know, I, I usually set a budget when I yep. go out, and, uh, you know, because I know my wife watches these. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I haven't hit that, you know, I, I, I'm still under it, so. Very good. But we'll go in here and see if there's anything that, uh, you know, might strike my fancy. Awesome. Let's rock it. All right. So, we, we found some gems here from our past. We used to have to support these games. Yeah. It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. How much are these? These are, uh, I don't know, what, what's that? 99 cents, and, oh, this one's a dollar ninety nine. Who? Frankly, they couldn't pay me to take these. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to break the budget if you pick those up. Yeah. So. All right. Browser's Books here in Kent. What would you find? Not exactly a game, but based on one. Baldur's Gate 2, uh, one of my all-time favorite games and the novelization. So Very good game. Kind of cool find for $2. It'll be interesting to see how they uh, write up Minsk and Boo. <laughs> Go for the eyes, Boo! Go for the eyes! <laughs> All right, well, that's my afternoon with Josh. Yeah. Cruising around Covington, Washington, trying to buy uh, some, some used games. And we got a nice little stack here. Found some decent stuff. Yeah. yeah. But more importantly, also, you, uh, you're you contributing to the uh, Metal Jesus. I, you know, I, it's, it's, my, it's my secondary calling in life. What, so. what, what do we got here? So I have Final Fantasy 2 to complement the Final Fantasy 1. I, th I think I'm complete with Final Fantasies at this point. And uh, Pilot Wings, <coughs> which uh, I love that game, but it's I think it's hard. <laughs> you, your viewers will probably think that I'm... No, a lot of those older <laughs> games are really hard. Yeah. I know, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Yes. So, so uh, those are for the for the collection. All right. Absolutely. Well, it's been really fun hanging out today. Yeah, man. I had it's a great been, time. It was really cool. It's been awesome. Yeah. All right, All right well, I want to thank you for watching my channel, and thanks for subscribing.